So this is interesting. I don't know if you can see this results mark, but almost uh, over 50% are not familiar with performance point. Over 56% absolutely nothing. Right. Okay. Uh, interesting. I'm interested in the 1% uh, that say a lot. That's me. I just wanted to keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to test you after the uh, session, Rachel. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> that would not end well for me. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close this poll. Thank you for taking a moment to answer it. I'll share the results with you. As you can see, about 51% uh, of our attendees know nothing about performance points. This is going to be a great session for you guys. You're going to go walk away with a lot of knowledge. And, um, you know, the other highest proportion know a little. So I think everyone's going to gain a lot from this. And we have one more well, I think uh, mm -hmm. what we'll do is we'll just keep it very introductory for a lot of the examples. So I'll take my time and just explain what I'm doing as I go. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's good. Oh, this is interesting. Your second poll is how much do you know about reporting services? And it's kind of the opposite as performance point. A lot of, uh, there's quite a bit of knowledge here. 33%, 34 37 know a lot. <laughs> so. Well, so we'll definitely focus more on the performance point stuff. Mm -hmm. and we'll we'll uh, take it the most you guys are going to say, well, I've got my reporting services. How do I expand on that knowledge and really use performance point to make it more useful? Right, right. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys for taking a moment to vote on this ad second poll we have. I'm going to go ahead and close that and share the results with you as well so that you can see. Um, I mean, almost everyone in this class today knows, you know, a fair amount about reporting services. So, like Mark said, I think you'll be focusing on performance point and this should be a great session. So, if you're ready, Mark, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch screens and make you presenter. Cool. Thank you, Rachel. Sure. Everyone have a great session. Okay, so you guys should be seeing uh, the, the intro screen. Uh, that's me sitting in the left-hand side of your screen. Um, on the other side of the screen is my latest book, SharePoint 2010 Business Intelligence. It is out now, in fact. So if you guys want to get a resource on um, SharePoint and BI, go get my book. Okay, so I guess the agenda for today, first, a little bit of a background. Um, what are the strengths of the two tools? And for, for those of you who've used neither of them and for those of you who've used one and perhaps not the other, you might be wondering and thinking, well, why are there really two different tools and why should I use one and why should I use the other? We won't spend a lot of time on that, but I'll take a few minutes just to uh, talk through it. And then, of course, we'll do the demo. So a little bit more on the demo. What we're going to do in our demo is I'm going to create a pretty basic <coughs> reporting services report. You know, not, nothing really fancy, but I'm going to do one little trick inside it, so I'm going to make it have a dynamic measure. Right? So I'm going to have a parameter that's going to say, well, what, does, what should this report actually report on? Once I've done that, I'm then going to create a dashboard and performance points, and I'm actually going to integrate that report inside uh, a performance point dashboard, and we're going to change what measures the report is showing by clicking on our dashboard, really making the report an integral part of the entire dashboard rather than sitting as a technology on the outside. So Microsoft has three main front-end tools. You've got Performance Point. And performance Point really is the, I want to put together an interactive scorecard very quickly without uh, having to do a lot of coding. Um, <clears throat> I want to have some analytics. I want to have a chart that I can actually change what's showing on the chart. I want to change the chart type. Now, Reporting services, as we know, isn't a very interactive technology. Yes, you've got drill downs. Yes, you've got drill throughs. But it's not so great on building lots of those. You can only drill down based on one thing. You can't say, well, the developers let me drill down on the sales territory. Actually, I want to drill down on what product this was. And that's one of the places where reporting services loses out to performance point. Right. Now, performance point has the opposite failing. You can't really customize performance points as a developer and say, I want a chart that looks exactly like this. So one of the uh, example charts is a bullet graph. Reporting services makes this dead easy. Performance point just simply doesn't have it. Uh, so by reporting services then, on the other hand, 
It's really great if you're high fidelity type of reports. If I'm going to develop a management pack and that my um, exec team is going to look at every month, we're going to print it out, we're going to maybe uh, emboss it or uh, bind it or whatever, that's going to be reporting services. I want to use a mapping visualization. Right? I want to actually put a Bing Maps layer inside my dashboard and highlight shapes based on how well the different districts have done. That's reporting services. So those advanced visualizations, those really fancy graphs that Performance Point doesn't do. So the other one that I'm not really going to talk about today is Excel and Excel services. And that's really running for the uh, guys who are doing their own types of analysis. Great technology, but not uh, today's thing. So we've said Performance Point is uh, great at some things. And we've said that reporting services is great at other things. And what do you do? So how do you choose between the one technology? I often get this question from a client saying, right, we need to set a standard with which technology people should use. I'm like, you can't do that. The technologies each have their space. So what is the answer? Well, the answer is mix and match. As you can see on the screen, we've got a very generic, blank SharePoint web part page. SharePoint is a technology that lets you mix and match between different technologies. So I can put an Excel services chart in the footer, I can put performance point filters in the top, I can put a performance point analytic chart in the right and a reporting services chart smack bang in the middle of this page. Really giving you the ability to actually chop and change and put these technologies together. And it's not just a matter of putting them on the same page and having them uh, just appear there. You can actually have them interact with each other. I'm going to take you through a couple of those techniques that you can use to make those technologies actually interact with each other. Um, so if you have a look here, this is an example of uh, one of the mix and match technologies that we've built for a previous client. Left hand side we've got a uh, very colorful and, and probably overly bright scorecard. We've got some analytic charts at the bottom, we've got another analytic chart at the right. Then at the top right we've got a reporting services map report and it's actually showing the different sales districts and as you click on the scorecard, the figure will actually change. So right now it's showing net retail sales. If you clicked on uh, markup, you'd actually change the highlighting based on the markup. So I think we're all really here to see some practical stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the demo. We're going to build a, a basic performance point dashboard, right? And we'll build some KPIs, some custom properties, scorecard dashboard. I'll talk about those terms as I hit it. Um, We'll then pull the reporting services report and we'll pull them together. So, I'm, uh, I'm here in my uh, SharePoint environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off I'm going to say, I want a new performance point dashboard. All right, I hit that and what it does is it starts opening up the performance point dashboard designer in the background. And let me just drag that across. Okay, it's saying what kind of dashboard do I want? Well, here in two columns works for me. Okay, and here's dashboard designer. So here's my new dashboard, and I'm just going to call the dashboard webinar. And page one can be PPS and RS. So what I've got here, basic dashboard, it's basically a container with those different web parts, and each one of these zones translates to a web part zone. Currently, this dashboard doesn't do anything, so we need to create a data connection. And this is very similar to um, data connections that you might create in reporting services. So I'm going to correct, connect to a cube on my machine. Right, so fairly standard connection box. I'm going to say put in my server name. And I'm going to choose the database. Right, so I'm going to choose the AdventureWorks database. It's quite a nice one to demo off. And I'm going to choose the AdventureWorks cube. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's call this uh, DSADW. So I'm going to give my data source a name. I've got one final thing that I've got to do on sending up this data source that you don't have to do on other, um, <clears throat> on other types of connections. And that's setting up my time dimension. And this really just gives us the ability to actually um, have a simpler way of accessing time code. 
So adventure works, we've got the date dot date dot calendar is our time dimension. Right? Choose a date to begin the year. So I browse my um, cube. Now AdventureWorks doesn't have any data for 2011, so I'm just going to map it back to 2008. That's a day level. And finally, reference date. And I'm just going to map that back to the 1st of Jan. And, sorry, year, semester, quarter month, day. Okay, so that's my data source really set up. The next thing that I'm going to do, uh, let me just give it a different name. Right, so the next thing that I need to do is the basis of every single thing that we build inside performance points, or at least the most important things, is that we have a thing called a KPI, a key performance indicator. A key performance indicator is saying, I want to show an actual and I want to show a target and it gives you a place to actually store those values and where they come from on the data sources. I'm going to start off and I'm going to create a new KPI. I'm just going to choose a blank KPI and what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this blank KPI sales amount. Okay, so we've got an actual and this actual needs to be sourced from somewhere in the queue and I'm going to choose this thing over here, data mappings. Right now it's set to fixed values. Now what fixed values is, so when you're prototyping this, maybe you don't have a data source yet, you want to put in some dummy numbers. That's what this would let you do. I've got a cube, so I'm going to change the source and I'm going to choose that data connection that uh, I created earlier. Now there are some other things that you can do. It doesn't have to be a cube. There are various other data sources, but we generally find cubes the best way to work. Okay, so sales amount. That's my measure. Cool. Now, a KPI set is an actual as well as a target, something you're comparing it to. You'll notice that at the bottom we've got this uh, additional piece that appeared for, for the targets. Here it's saying, what indicator do you want to appear when you actually have your actual compared to your target? So this one, I'm actually going to leave it as the default, but I also do need to change the data mappings. So once again, click Change Source. Uh, once again, change it to our new uh, data connection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say sales amount quota. <coughs> okay, so pretty basic. Now I'm going to just save that KPI away. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this KPI on a scorecard. Okay, so I'm going to say new KPI. Uh, sorry, I'm going to say new scorecard. All right, and a scorecard is really a collection of uh, KPIs along with dimensions that you're drilling down on them. Because I've created a KPI, I'm going to use a blank scorecard instead of the wizard. Okay, and I'm going to call this uh, just ADW. Now I'm going to add my KPI. Now, one thing you'll notice when you get to this point is that there's three different main areas. You've got the workspace browser on the left, and that's really just to choose what you're editing. You've got your main design surface on in the middle. If you want to add anything to that design surface, you'll always go to the details tab on the right. Now, I know that my stuff is in KPIs, so let me grab sales amount and drop it on the screen. Just hit update. As you can see, what it's saying is we know that sales amount, the actual is uh, 109 million, the target was 114 million, we're 4% off. Of course, we haven't actually filtered by a particular date, we haven't filtered by a particular area, so this isn't really that useful to us at this point. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to drill down on the date. All right, so I'm going to uh, go over to the dimensions on the right-hand side, and now I want to drill down on date. Okay, and let's uh, drag date.date.calendar and I'm actually going to say let's bring it into our columns. All right now, remember I said uh, we're pretending it's 2008, so let's look at a two-year 
set of values, 2007-2008. Now you'll notice that it's only added it to the actual. And if you actually went ahead and pulled this above the target, what you'd have is actual, actual target, target. Not, not really so useful. So what you'll do, delete that, delete the target. And let's pull our target in next to our actual. And then we'll actually put it next to it. So you've got both options of laying it out in either manner. Okay, so now we're looking at this year and last year, actual and target. This is looking better. We can see that it was a lot of the older data that was a problem. <coughs> Let's go ahead and create a um, new measure, and this time we actually want to look a little bit at the uh, gross margins. So now we know what the sales amounts are. We want to see what were our gross margins over time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say new and KPI. Again, blank KPI. Gross margin. And I'm going through the exact same uh, process. I do see that a question has popped in, can you compare year over year? And you totally can. It, it's actually one of the easy ones to do. And in fact, um, if we have time, I'll show you year over year. It's, it's pretty easy. All you would do is you hit this time intelligence filter, and that's why we set up the time source. And you would just punch in year over there to actually limit this to be the year. Now, we've done it with the drop down a little bit later, so I'm not going to do it there. That's the sort of way you'd do that. You'd say gross profit for this year, you do the same for target. Now, we don't have a target for our uh, gross profit, so I'm actually just going to delete that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my second KPI to my scorecard. And we hit update. As you can see, it's left the targets blank. Right, so the next thing is we actually want to see this on a page. So let's go ahead and let's say um, <coughs> new, oh, we have a dashboard. Let's go ahead and actually just add the scorecard to our dashboard. And we'll deploy it through the SharePoint preview it, and then we'll do one or two more things to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the scorecard there, right? And I'm just going to right click, and I'm going to say deploy to SharePoint. All right, now I'm going to deploy to webinars and dashboards. All right, and as you can see, what it's done is it's deployed the scorecard. We do have the ability to drill down. So if we drill down, we can actually see what's the total and what are the actual breakdowns. Pretty basic, not, not anything uh, horrendously fancy yet. Let's make it a little bit more interactive. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an analytic chart. So I'm going to say, give me a uh, new report, and I'm going to choose analytic chart. Right. Once again, we're uh, going to choose the same data connection we've been working with. And I'm just going to call this analytic. All right, so this is uh, one of the easier chart building tools that I've worked with. First thing you do is you say, what uh, measure do I want? And let's start off and say that we want uh, sales amount and sales amount quota. And we actually know that we want to look at these. Uh, we actually want to look at these um, for a specific time, but over product. So let's actually drop quota and just show one of them. And let's say we want to do this across product categories. And let's finish off and just bring in a date. I'm going to bring in that same calendar date. Right, now it's defaulted to all periods and all products. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say, give it to me for uh, 
2008. And so give me the four product categories. Okay, so dead simple um, <clears throat> chart, nothing really to it. Let's save it away. Now let's embed this on our dashboard. We're going to do a couple things. Now, the one thing is what we want to do is we want to be able to click on the chart. We want to be able to click on the scorecard, say here. We want it to change to show us, for instance, the values for uh, 2007. Okay? And maybe we also want when we click over here to show us gross margin instead of sales amount. So there's a couple steps that we need to do that to get that to work. What we're going to do first is we're going to set it up just for the date. Okay, so I'm going to add my analytic chart. All right, it's dead easy. We add it to the dashboard. And then if we want to link it up, all we have to do is go over here. We've got column member because we've got dates along the columns. And we're going to grab member unique name, which says use the key. Right, and here it's saying, what do you want to connect it to? It's chosen the first one in the list, and date calendar is actually fine. Um, we want to connect to member unique name. Cool. So let's deploy this and show you what it looks like. So we click over there, and it changes to uh, 2007. It is, of course, interactive, so we can drill down. Um, as soon as we want to actually uh, drill it again, we can do that. So pretty basic. All right. So the next thing is when we click here, we want it to show, show us uh, gross margin instead of sales amount. And for that, we've got to do something called custom property. Let's hop over to sales amount first, and I'm going to go to properties. What you'll do is you'll say new property. You're going to make it of type text. And here, I'm actually going to put the name of the measure. And this has actually got to be the exact uh, code from the cube. Measures that sells a lot. All right, and I'm going to call my property measure name. Okay, and I'm going to do the same for gross margin. So new property, say measures dot gross margin, and the quote measure name. Now, everything that you do over here, the spelling of this name, the spelling of this, if you make one single mistake, you've got an extra space. The spaces between this and sales amount don't match up. It's not going to work correctly. So you need to be ultra, ultra careful about how you uh, actually do that. Okay, so we've added this custom property. What we're going to do now is we're going to go over here. And there we go. What has appeared is this measure name property that we've added is, has been added under the KPIs list. So you're going to see one thing quickly here. We drag it across, and what you can see is connect to measures, source value, KPI, row measure name. Let's play uh, this away. So we click on uh, 2007. It goes to 2007, but it's still sales amount. Click gross margin, and we get an error running data source query. So I've obviously made a uh, slight mistake in measures that gross margin somehow. And just, uh, ah, it's not gross margin, it is in fact uh, gross profit. Irony in action. I warn you about it, and I make the mistake myself. There we go. So now, as you can see, it's flipping over, and it's showing us uh, different measures. OK. So one last thing that I want to show you on performance point quickly, and that's actually changing the values that we send over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back. And on this first one, I've got my list of connections, and I'm going to say edit connection. Okay, so we know we're connecting date to calendar, member column, unique name, call, pretty basic. We've also got this thing connection formula. Now, connection formula actually lets you write formula to change what's being sent across. 
first thing to notice is you need two angle brackets, the word unique name, and unique name is actually case sensitive. Right, and unique name is saying, get me the key that you want to send over. And then you can apply some MDX code to it. So I can go unique name dot children. And you can do all sorts of MDX code. You can do case statements. You can say, depending on what level I'm on, do this, do the other thing. Very, very powerful. This is just the, the, the uh, taster of it. Having said that it's the taster, it's also the most common use that you're going to use. So here, we hit uh, that. As you can see, we click on the year and it actually drills in and it's already broken it up into the uh, two halves for us. All right, so you can see uh, half on half growth or, or whatever the case may be. Cool. So Rachel, I think uh, we've got time to take a couple questions before I jump into some of the reporting services stuff. Okay, great. Uh, I think we only have one question right now from Lisa. And her question is, can you compare year over year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we can definitely compare year over year. How would you set up a calculated target, i.e. 20% more sales for current year over prior year. Um, <clears throat> that's actually pretty dead easy. And in fact, I'm going to show you guys very quickly before we jump across into RS. So we look at our sales amount. We've got an actual, which is doesn't have a time value currently. And I'm going to say um, new actual, and I'm going to call this CY. And I'm going to browse it through to sales months. So far, all exactly the same. Right, now I'm going to do something a little bit different. And I'm going to say, your formula, give me the uh, current year. Now, of course, I did that mapping earlier. So it thinks the current year is 2008. I'm going to create a new target. I'm going to call my target previous year. Right. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different. I can actually copy work that I've done before by clicking on a um, previous metric. Right. And then I'm just going to say you know, minus one. Okay. Right. And you said you want it to be 20%. And uh, let's say yellow is 100. Um, Uh, let me go ahead and just create a new scorecard quickly. Believe it or not, that year-on-year -year stuff is, is probably one of the most common things that we do, is showing stuff year-on-year. -year. So here you can see, um, I've obviously flipped those two around because it says current year 25. Um, but there you can see that's for the one year and the, the previous year is 41. And target compared to actual. Yeah. Anyway, so th that's really the uh, basic piece of it. Um, here it's saying previous year is uh, 41, current year is 25, so those two are backwards. That's the general principle. You'll just add those date calculations. Yep. What we're going to do next is we're actually going to oh. flip over. Actually, we have a few more questions, Mark, if you don't mind. Question coming in. Yep, we have a few more. Okay, cool. uh, let's take them. Okay, great. Jeff would like to know, does reporting services have to be integrated to leverage performance point services? Uh, no, it doesn't, in fact. So we were actually, Jeff, I'm going to, I'll deal with that question a little bit more in depth as soon as we get to the next step. Okay, and Jennifer would like to know, can you make the year over your comparison dynamic. For example, changes rolling 12 to 18 months, etc. at first or calendar or fiscal. Um, can you make it dynamic? Like such as 12 to 18 months Changes cycles, to or? rolling 12 months act at first of calendar or fiscal. Um, so, Yes, you, you uh, can make it dynamic. Let me dive in and show you one thing you can do to make it dynamic. It's actually not something we we're going to cover in depth today, but we've got time. Um, we have a thing called the time intelligence filter. So we hard-coded those times inside there. And if you wanted to actually do dynamic types of calculations. So these, these calculations are dynamic in the sense that they 
automatically pick up the current date. Right? So all I'm doing this basic add a, add a data source. Now remember I ended those formulas earlier. Right? So uh, I think you said rolling 12 months and rolling 8 months. So you've got all these formulas that you can do. And my caps lock is on. Right? And you can say month minus 18 colon month minus 3. You know, just, just to illustrate it. Um, and, and you can do a whole bunch of different calculations based on these things. And what you'll see here is it generates all those formulas. All right, so you can actually look at the MDX it's generating. It's starting at 2007.05 and running through there at 2006.11. Right, and this could be and uh, I'm going to um, just show you that quickly. What that'll do, this filter it will actually give you a, a list of um, this filter will actually just give you a list of different calcs that you can use. So let me drop that in there. One more thing I must do, just check that. Okay, and what you'll get is you'll have a drop down like that where you can say 12 months, 15 months, current year, as many different permutations as you actually want. So you've got the full capability of doing very, very dynamic types of calculations with those uh, things. Hey, we only have one more question, and it's from Miles. He wants to know if you can show quarter to date versus prior year quarter to date or month to date. Okay, sure, you definitely can. So same same concept. And here we are current year, right? So here we're showing what's the current year. And if you wanted say you said uh, quarter to date. Okay, so uh, let's month to date, quarter to date will all work the same. Here what you would do is you'd say quarter dot first day, colon quarter dot day, which will actually give you uh, we set up quarters, which will actually give you all the days in the current quarter. Okay, and that's for the current quarter. And if you wanted to go previous quarter, similar concept except this time what you'll do is you'll say quarter minus one dot first day colon, quarter minus one, dot day. And that will then start you off in um, 2008 to 101, which is the previous quarter, and it will run those parallel things. Now, if you wanted to do um, last year the same quarter, you could do year minus one, dot quarter, dot first day, or uh, year minus one, dot quarter, dot day. And just Rachel, on this point, all these formulas, there's quite a lot of stuff. There is actually a cheat sheet posted on my blog where you can get to what all these different pieces of the formula are. Okay, great. And Lisa's got one more quick question. She's saying that her users would like to select, um, she would like to select specific years to compare from filters. Is that possible on the system? Specific years to compare from filters. Yes, it is. Um, if you want to select specific years, instead of a time intelligence filter, you'd create what we call a member selection filter. And I'm just going to show you what it does quickly. What you would do is you'd actually go date dot date dot calendar, and then you'd say these are the years my users can select from, and then they'd be able to select the specific year. And you can actually let them select two years and have them appear as columns. So yes, you can definitely do that. Okay, great. And I'm not actually going to pull that one finish. Okay, wonderful. Okay, right, cool. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a reporting services report. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this reporting services report in Report Builder rather than in the, uh, Visual Studio. There is no difference between Visual Studio reports and Report Builder reports. I could save this report to a, a file, open it in Visual Studio, edit it in Visual Studio, save it back to the file, open it in Report Builder, 
there's absolutely no difference. The tools just look slightly different. Okay, um, that question always comes up. So what I'm going to do is I'm, in, I'm actually just going to add a, uh, a chart in reporting services. And I'm going to then add that chart to the dashboard that I just created. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to clean up this report so there's no extraneous stuff on it. So I deleted the header. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say remove page footer. When I insert the chart, I'm actually going to make sure that the chart takes up the whole space. So first thing, add a data source. All right. And I'm going to use an embedded data source. Often you would use a shared one. Okay. And similar concept. I'm going to point to my uh, local uh, database, choose AdventureWorks, hit OK. Uh, data source one is a really poor name, but I'm not going to fix it now. And DS sales. I'm going to use a data set, choose my data source, and query designer. Okay, so let's bring in a few things and let's do something a little bit similar. So we want to see um, sales amount and perhaps we want to see uh, gross profit again. Maybe this time we want to see total product cost. Okay, so we also know that we were looking at date. So let's bring date. Let's make date. Firstly, let's bring in as a parameter in the top. All right, and I'm going to default this to 2008. And I'm going to tick the parameter box. And I want to look at my date over months. Cool, so pretty simple. And the other thing that we had is we had products. So let's bring in product category. OK, so I'm going to hit OK. Okay, now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new parameter. This parameter is going to be measure name. So I'm going to say add parameter, call it uh, measure name, right, available values. I'm going to specify the values. Sometimes you wouldn't, since uh, just to allow everything in, I'm going to say sales amount. And now I'm going to use that exact same measure name that I used in performance point. Measures that sales amounts is the value. The reason is we're actually going to pass these values in from performance point later. The other one that I used was gross profit. Measures dot gross profit. Uh, oh. One thing you have to do is you do have to wrap the whole thing in uh, quotes. Okay. So now I've got a new parameter and I'm going to create a calculated field. My calculated field I'm going to call just measure. Okay, so I'm going to do just a basic inline if. You could easily do a switch statement. I'm going to say, if my measure name, uh, I don't want date calendar, I actually want uh, measure name. Parameters measure name value is equal to yeah, measures dot sales amount. Then the value that I want is the sum of the sales amount. Otherwise, just give me the gross profit. And you, of course, can build this out that you do it for 10 or 20 or 30 different measures. Cool, pretty basic. I'm going to insert a very basic chart. And let's do the chart wizard. We'll use DS sales. Let's do an area chart. An area chart is one of the things that uh, Performance Point can't do. And so, actually, I don't want sales amount. What I want is I want that measure value. For the series, I want the categories. And for the uh, categories, I want the month. And 
Let's do generic. Cool. So I'm going to expand this out a little bit. Okay. Delete the uh, chart title. Months. Uh, let's run this and uh, see how it goes. Uh, ooh, just fix that. Ah, I know what I've done. Okay. So I need to actually bring it from the same data set. Oh wow, that's interesting. Uh, let me just store the credentials quickly. So here we've got a very interesting looking uh, area chart and I'm not even sure that I actually know what's going on so I'm going to change that over to line chart because it's uh, definitely looking very, very interesting. Okay, now let's run it. Right, so possibly not the most entertaining chart because it's picked up the months in the long order, but yeah, you get the idea it's just a basic RS chart. So cool, let's uh, save this away. I think the final thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a default measure. And that I'm going to do by copying here. And I'm not going to save it away to SharePoint. And actually, I want to save it under webinars, dashboards, uh, report library, in fact. Right, so now we've got uh, our stuff in reporting services, and we've got a chart in SharePoint. What we want to do is we want to embed this chart inside our dashboard. What we'll do is we'll right click on performance point content and dashboard designer, say view report, okay, and we'll choose reporting services report. Okay, and as you can see, there's actually a server mode over there, and the server mode over there actually lets you choose um, whether or not you want to be running in report sensor mode, non integrated, or in SharePoint integrated. Now in my case, I'm actually running in SharePoint integrated, and I'm just going to go get that report server URL. I'm going to pull it out of the reporting server um, configuration manager if you don't know what it is. Right? And you can see that that's my report server uh, URL. So let me copy that across and put it in. Now the other thing, the one the benefit that native mode has is you actually you get a browser that lets you browse to that report. We didn't get one of those, so we're going to go back to SharePoint and we're going to go find that URL again. And now we know that uh, I saved it to my report library. All right, so here's my report library. Now what you can do is you can see that the report library, that's the report library URL, and then uh, you would actually simply add the I yell to it. Now the reason that uh, you don't just click on here 
and pick up that uh, URL that actually takes you to a preview page. So let's jump back to performance point, paste the URL to our report, hit preview. And as you can see, it's pulled our report up. It's also picked up the parameters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this Thesaurus. And I'm going to put it into my dashboard. <coughs> right, so back on the dashboard. And we want to go to PPS Scenarios. First thing I want to do is I actually want to put it below everything else. So I'm going to right click over here. I'm going to say Add Below. You can see it's actually added an additional zone for me. It's quite nice. It's very easy to lay out these pages. Let's then pull in our SSRS report. And let's just scroll down. Go. Now, sometimes if you're looking at these things and you think that it's uh, a little bit big, you also have the ability to right click and say zone settings and change the size. In this case, I think uh, half the page is plenty fine. Right, now, similar to how we actually drag the connections over to the analytic chart, we can do the same thing over here. Now, we know that we want to use measure name, drag it down to reporting services, and we want to connect it to measure name. Cool. Now, let's uh, deploy it to see how it works like that. Now, obviously, we haven't connected up to date. You can, of course, do that as well. Okay, so one thing you'll notice is that it isn't uh, sized particularly well. We can, of course, change that. As you can see, what it does is you get an asynchronous update, and it actually changes your graph. So let's just resize it a little bit so that it's a little bit more meaningful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click here, change the zone settings, and make this like 80%. It should give us some more size on that page. Cool, plenty of space. As you can see, we click there. That chart updates. This chart also refreshes and, and changes all the values. So th this is quite a useful um, technique to use. And you can, of course, do the same thing by sending the year values through. Right, now, we haven't done that right here, but that, that is definitely the next step in doing this. Okay, so the other thing you might want to do is actually remove this toolbar. And I almost always remove the toolbar. Let's go back to our reporting services report and remove toolbar. Right, so removing the toolbar doesn't normally break the report. Um, let's uh, just see if that really was that. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, um, so I normally remove the toolbar. And as you can see, there are some inconsistent behaviors now and then. Um, so, um, Rachel, I think we've got some time for a few questions. I, I see there's quite a few questions have been coming in. Great. Great. All right. Um, just really quickly, Scott was wondering if um, he stated that you accidentally added an extra I and if in the measure and that that might be why there is a... not accidentally. Um, so, Scott, that if, that I stands for inline. So, that's an inline if, which is a function. You pass that inline if three... Um, variables and those three variables are the first one is the condition, the first one is, is, is the value if it's true and the third one is the value if it's false. It, it's actually inline if, it's not just a normal if. That's very interesting, okay. I didn't know that. I learned something um, really And well. just on that, the incongruency in the chart is because uh, reporting services over here has actually ordered the, the months wrong and it's, it's a flaw in Adventure works that don't have a correctly keyed month. There are ways to get around it. It's 
more around it. That's why the, the chart looks a little bit funny because the months aren't in order one after the other. Okay. I see. Uh, Martin would like to know, can you have parameters listed in a single column instead of two columns? Can I have parameters listed in a single column instead of two columns? Uh, Martin, could you elaborate a little bit on, on what you mean by that? Okay, great. While we're waiting for Martin to elaborate, we'll go on to John's question. And his is, what is the difference uh -huh. between reporting integrated mode and other modes? Okay, so reporting integrated mode is when you've taken reporting services and you've installed it in integrated mode with SharePoint. And the idea is that if, if you ever worked with the older versions of reporting services 2000, 2005, Basically, you have a report server. It's got its own web server. All the, the, the report definitions get uploaded to that web server. You browse everything through the report manager. In integrated mode, your report definition files no longer live on your report server. Your report server is actually just the workhorse that renders the reports. The reports themselves live in SharePoint, and they're just another type of SharePoint content. And let me actually show you exactly what I mean. So here, I've got a SharePoint library, and each one of these is actually a reporting services report. What this means is I get all the great benefits that SharePoint has got around version control, document approvals, um, automatic deployments, where I can actually send a um, report from one location to another. Um, you still have all the other reporting services stuff, which is this piece here. You get the additional uh, send to and your SharePoint administrator can program other locations. So for instance, if you've got a dev environment and you want to move reporting services from the dev environment to another environment, it's quite easy because you can configure that environment over there. The developer sends it from dev to QA. The person who's doing QA automatically gets an email, um, and then they go in there and they, they edit it, and they either send it back and uh, reject it, or they, in which case the developer gets an email, or they approve it, in which case it needs to be released for production. So there's, a, there's a lot of things that SharePoint gives you around that sort of workflow that you don't get in reporting services. Okay, great. Um, so Martin clarified, and he, um, yeah. he's saying, sorry, the choices are listed individually on their own single column. Ah, okay, that makes sense. All right, so Can I guess he has the choices answered. listed. Um, he answered his own question. <laughs> oh, okay, I answered his own question. Cool. I still <laughs> Good job, can't get it. Um, so Lisa has a question, and it is, mm -hmm. if the user needs to select more than one year or quarter, and the sales amount needs to compare against each other, against each year or quarter, will they compare on the scorecard? Um, if the user needs to select one year or the other, will they compare on the scorecard? Okay, so what you want to do is you actually want to have, um, a year, like 2007 selected for the actual and 2008 selected for the target, allowing the user to override it to 2010 and 2011, or possibly 2008 and 2011. Um, there is a way of doing it. It's a little bit more complex to actually get it to do exactly what you're trying to do. So there is a way of doing it, but it's a little bit outside the scope of what we're going to have time for doing right now. Um, if you pop me a question on my blog, and uh, maybe I should just actually put uh, that address up quickly. So if you actually go to my blog and... Ah, you just put that up um, and put that over there. I will attempt to answer that. Great. And Sorry, yes. it's, it's not a short answer, unfortunately. But he will answer it. Mark's great like that. <laughs> um, Trent, I love your question. Mark, do you have a book that you could recommend that covers these topics well? Um, so actually, no. It's, it's one of the things we've been kicking around writing an advanced performance point book. There, there are a couple of performance point books in, in the market. Um, I, I personally didn't read any of them to get really insanely into performance points. So we have been kicking around writing an advanced uh, performance point book. But we do 
uh, now offer training. We have SharePoint 2010 BI, right. which is, does cover, cover the uh, performance point stuff, right. which we kicked off at the beginning. Um, it does cover performance point, but it's not exclusively performance points, if that's, that was the question. Correct, but aren't you offering a new training course, Mark, that has uh, performance points? No, the new, the new training course is Power Pivot. Okay. Um, we do, the, the old training course, the one that we're still offering, the SharePoint 2010 BI one, does cover all of this. Okay. So that would be a great uh, resource for you as well. And then, mm -hmm. uh, Jorge would like to know, can he render a graph as an image? Can he render a graph as an image? Um, I actually don't think you can render the graph just purely as an image through the reporting services. That render as image option was a Visio option from Performance Point 2007. I don't know if you can actually uh, specify to just render as a straight image. And no, there isn't a setting there to do so. So it actually renders it as a web part, not just as a... Uh, JPEG through through this embedding process. Okay, and um, we have another question from Andres. Is it possible to define the URL as a variable so you won't need to manually change the URL when you move from dev environment to pro? So you can't manually change the uh, URL, but there is a very very slick way of deploying performance point content from uh, dev to prod where what you do is you actually say save workspace as it saves you an XML file and what I often do, what it does is it automatically updates the data sources that Performance Point uses and when you do the deployments using this method so you would save this to uh, deployments and then you'd be able to go and say import and import from deployment now, what I do for the reporting services stuff, if I've got a lot of things that I want to deploy, is I actually just open up that XML and, and uh, do a search replace and change all the dev uh, reporting services URLs to the production reporting services URLs. Because you, you don't want to have to go through and replace a million of them. And that, that's a pretty seamless uh, way of doing it. Okay, great. Um, we have another question uh, about a book. Is there a great book for SSRS that you could recommend? Mm -hmm. There are a couple of great books for SSRS. Um, I can't actually give you the names offhand, but if you go have a look at uh, BIDN under Devon Knight and Brian Knight, they've got a couple of great books. Great. And that's BIDN.com. It's an excellent resource for all your BI questions as well. And uh, we have another question. How can we migrate our existing reports mm -hmm. to the new platform? <laughs> okay, with uh, lots of difficulty. Um, what what exists? What yeah. So, what the problem there is that there's no quick and easy way to migrate lots and lots of reports from uh, a non-integrated mode to an integrated mode. You, you generally have to open up your uh, Visual Studio, get all the reports into a project, and then deploy that project to SharePoint. Right now, that's the quickest way of doing that migration. Okay. Bo would like to know, can Performance Point export the reports to Excel or PDF format? Uh, it can export to Excel. It can't export to PDF. If we go have a look over here, we've got PowerPoint and Excel are the two that you can uh, export to. Okay, great. And um, we have a couple more questions uh, before we're going to be completely out of time. Mm -hmm. Does SSRS need to be integrated into SharePoint if I need to link a performance point and SSRS to pass parameters? No. So you, you, if you're in um, performance points, and uh, let me just open up the dashboard designer quickly. Um, right. If you chose report center and you actually just chose your report, you would still have the ability to pass all those parameters. So it does not have to be an integrated mode in order to uh, link those reports. This is a great way if you've got your reports in a report server and you're not going to SharePoint integrated to actually expose them in SharePoint. 
And in fact, I know a couple of customers, this is pretty much the only way that they've exposed their reports in SharePoint is through this. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much, Mark. I know we have several more questions, but we are unfortunately out of time. You can feel free to email Mark or message him on his blog. He's really great about getting back to everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you for such a wonderful session. Hi, right, cool. Thanks, guys. Great. And as always, this has been recorded, and it will be available on our website by the end of the week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Cheers.